Hi, everybody. I hope everyone enjoyed a holiday weekend with good food and Zoom company. My name is Irene Batun Bacall. I am the president of NorCal Columbia Alumni Association, and I'm glad that you're able to join us this evening to take part in the ongoing discussion and navigating the new and current norm within promoting healthy, safe, and thriving communities. I'm happy we have a number of attendees from other parts of the globe. In the chat box, please say hi and state which country or city you're calling from and your favorite art piece or event while you're, we got everyone settle in. So before I introduce our speakers, I would like to explain the purpose of Healthy Space Series. Healthy Space Series serves to promote the ongoing conversation of what lies ahead in our current and future environment and challenges we're eager to assess and solve in healing our communities. Today, you welcome three art and culture advocates who pivoted efforts during these uncertain times while highlighting issues, sparking engagement and promoting economic recovery. The pandemic has imposed restrictions that threatened the art and culture community's efforts to connect people from canceled concerts to shuttered art galleries and movie and theaters. But with resourceful and creative outreach, these organizations are able to overcome setbacks. The format of Healthy Space Series starts with our presenter's presentation, followed by a Q&A discussion. As a reminder, we want to promote an open dialogue, so please feel free to build a conversation with our speakers during our Q&A discussion segment. If you have any questions, please submit them in the chat box. And just before we continue, NorCal Columbia Alumni Association is fortunate enough to have a great source of individuals and alumni notable and accomplished in their profession who are generous enough to put time aside in sharing their expertise and insight. So along with Paint the Void, SF Urban Film Fest, and Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, we would also like to thank our collaborating groups, Cornell and NorCal, Penn Club of Silicon Valley, and Yale Club of San Francisco. Our goal is to promote conversations that will help you find a common ground in obtaining a safe, healthy, and thriving community as well as share knowledge and awareness amongst each other. So many have often looked towards data and design and how to promote healthy spaces, but how has art and, a com art and culture community contributed to the recovery of safe and thriving spaces in promoting community and economic healing? With that in mind, I am honored to introduce our speakers, Fade Darmawi, Jonathan Muscone, and Meredith Winner. We will start with Faye, who will share with us an um, SF Urban Film Fest efforts to promote the art and culture community. So Faye is a cultural producer and community development banker interested in leveraging the power of storytelling and media for social justice. She is the founder and executive director of the SF Urban Film Fest and has 25 years of experience as a leader in affordable housing finance, as well as five years of screenwriting training. She is a screenwriter alumni of a community of writers at Squaw Valley and a former community fellow at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts and National Arts Strategy. Bay is a recipient of the Community Alliance Award from the American Institute of Architects and a Special Recognition Award for Accomplished Planner from the American Planning Association. Bay's formal urbanist training is from MIT and the University of Pennsylvania but her love for cities is from her childhood growing up in the epicenter of Jakarta, Indonesia. She is a mother of college age twin sons. So everybody, let's give a warm welcome for Faye Darmawi. Hello everybody. Thank you so much, Irene, for that warm welcome. And um, hello, Meredith, and hello, Jonathan. Um, actually, the SF Urban Film Fest is uh, in artist in residency at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts with Jonathan. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what the SF Urban Film Fest has been doing uh, in terms of pivoting during the pandemic. Our, our uh, bread and butter is uh, in live in-person engagement. Um, we've had seven years of film festivals where we uh, screen films and have panel discussions in all types of different venues. And we're known for that. We're known for live in-person discussions. So when the pandemic hit, um, it was sort of scary. Like we didn't know what we were going to do. And a lot of film festivals pivoted online and that has been the saving grace for many film festivals. 
and we did a few online uh, events, um, but uh, we missed having the live interaction. Although we know that um, COVID is a uh, very, very dangerous uh, health concern, we really wanted to respond to our communities, and especially the communities that have been hit really hard and have not had the resources uh, drawn to them. So what we did with uh, Yerba Buena Center for the Arts was produce uh, a one night event called City is Alive in the Bayview. So the Bayview is the second uh, hardest hit community in terms of COVID. And we wanted to highlight what was already going uh, on in terms of arts and culture happening in the Bayview, including Bayview Live, which is a, a five year hip hop concert that was put together by Imprint City. We wanted to highlight the work of another community organization called Young Community Developers. Uh, they were doing uh, essential work. They pivoted from providing um, uh, housing development services to providing housing vouchers, so emergency services. And we wanted to highlight their story and their story uh, uh, in terms of the legacy of activists that have brought about re resources to the Bayview. We also wanted to highlight the work of small businesses that keep our city alive and, and vital. Um, and the host for that evening was uh, Laughing Monk. And this is a picture of the shared space at Laughing Monk Brewery on Egbert Avenue. Um, and what you see there is a film projection of um, one of the hip hop artists uh, acts that we projected onto the warehouses on Egbert Avenue. And the little chameleon there is an existing um, mural that's, that's there uh, as part of Sprayview. And we worked with a uh, technology, arts technology, um, black co uh, collective called Crux. And they did the projection mapping so that the chameleon looks like it's come alive. Um, next slide, please. And what we highlighted in this, in terms of a theme, was the theme of everyday heroes. Uh, this is a this is a this is a photo of uh, of a mural uh, of a woman named Lenora Levon. And this mural actually exists on Third and Palou uh, in the in the Bayview. And Lenora Levon was a world renowned uh, Bayview based fashion designer. And we wanted to feature her story because. Uh, it's a story of entrepreneurship and creativity that's very much alive in the Bayview. And we wanted to uplift that. Um, when working with Crux, uh, Crux was able to use computer graphics to make uh, th uh, this, um, this image come alive. And the woman who's standing there in front of, the, of this image, uh, actually, if she's walking back and forth, the, the, the video uh, projection comes alive. So literally, um, the the store the, the everyday heroes of the Bayview come alive um, uh, using uh, art technology and um, film projection. So uh, we had a socially distant live event actually, and we also did simultaneously a a live stream of the hip hop concert. Um, so using creativity and uh, the production power of YBCA, we were able to do a COVID safe live in person performance event with, with supporting uh, three small businesses uh, and uplifting the work of a nonprofit that is providing essential services. Thanks, Irene. Thank you, Faye, for such an informative presentation. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions just to follow up in terms of upcoming events that SF Urban Film Fest has coming up. So I'm going to come next continue on to Jonathan Moscone from Yerba Buena Center for the Arts. Um, so I would say that... Just a moment. Okay. 
Oh, just a moment, sorry. Uh, John Bermasconi currently serves as a chief producer of the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco. Over the past five years, Jonathan has shepherded the civic engagement efforts at YBCA, focusing on creative placemaking, food justice, youth empowerment, and most recently co-leading the successful ballot measure to restore arts funding for San Francisco artists and organizations. A native San Franciscan, where he currently resides with his husband, Daryl Carbonaro, currently chairs the advisory committee of San Francisco's Grants for the Arts and is serves as well as on the board of Alice Waters' Edible Schoolyard Project and previously of Theater Communications Group. Prior to YBCA, Jonathan served for 15 years as artistic director of the California Shakespeare Theater and is the first recipient of the Zelda Fishlander award given by the stage directors and the choreographers foundation for transforming the American theater throughout his unique and creative work. Jonathan received his master's of fine arts from the Yale School of Drama and a bachelor's of arts from Williams College and he continues to pursue directing throughout the country. So everybody let's give a warm welcome for Jonathan. Hi. Wow that was a long bio. I'm sorry you have to listen to all that. Um, I'm John. Uh, grateful to be here with you all and uh, uh, glad to be always in conversation with Faye and uh, my new colleague Meredith from Paint the Void, who we're also doing work with right now. Um, so we've, we've, we've been engaged in a lot of work around um, uh, creating healthy spaces for community at YBCA. Uh, when I first got there, we started with the Market Street Prototyping Festival, which is a project with the city of San Francisco to re help reimagine uh, the main artery of San Francisco, Market Street, through a festival in which we uh, uh, had an open call for prototypes that would inspire connection amongst people so that it wasn't just a thoroughfare, but a place where people can meet each other, can be inspired and connect. And we did this across very, very distinct neighborhoods from Embarcadero, which is a tourist area, all the way to Civic Center, which combines both a uh, high tech world and people living on the edge in our society. Uh, several years later, uh, we continue to do this work and now are in partnership with the city again, with the Office of Economic Workforce Development and um, with Paint the Void uh, around the San Francisco Creative Core. Um, we all uh, are aware of the situation that we're in. And while people call these challenging times or uncertain times, I think, I think all times are uncertain. I just think they pose as certain. And now we're certainly in a very, very unclear time. So I think these are pretty certain times. And I think the most certain thing I know about this time is that artists need to get to work and artists have um, need to be proven once again, over and over, once again, to be valuable in the health and well-being of their communities. Instead of thinking top down in terms of creative placemaking and in terms of health and well-being in which people are told what they can and can't do, artists have a unique way to message uh, to the public that has been has inspired people through many crises in this country. And so we've, we've gotten together with uh, Paint the Void and Meredith, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that if not for other things that they are doing. Um, to bring artists to areas inside of San Francisco to inspire uh, and to continue to um, promote public health among uh, people in the city. I'm sorry, I'm being thrown by the, there we are. Um, I get thrown by the Zoom, it's terrible. Uh, what you see right here, uh, we have uh, Amira, we have Aura and another dancer from, these folks are, um, the dancers on the, on the screens right are from, um, Dance Mission and Amira is from um, SF Baco, Bay Area Theater Company, two of the organizations we partnered with along with uh, Carnival SF to uh, work with music, to bring artists out there, um, to encourage people to wear their masks and to applaud them when they do. And I'll tell you, you think wearing a mask seems like basic information when you're down in North Beach on a Friday night, it's not. When you're in Valencia and people are hanging out on the closed street, it's not. So what, um, what we're doing is bringing artists out there to engage with folks, to talk with them, to sing to them, to play music for them, to dance around them, and to engage them in like sidewalk chalk activity, just to keep them inspired about doing the thing that is most important, which is caring for themselves and for people around them. Um, I think we've gone backwards. I think there's one step 
towards, or I should be on slide nine, um, show some more pictures. Uh, anyway, um, uh, we're now in our second weekend. We're in, we've been in North Beach and we've been on Valencia and we're opening up two more weekends uh, through the holiday season into the early January. And this is part of our uh, attempt to A, give money to artists, make sure they are working and realizing that while, while we can't perform in the typical way that we were comfortable doing and able to do in previous times, artists still have a job to do. Artists still have value. And our, job, our, our role is to try to pilot something inspired by the WPA, inspired by all the, the Civilian Conservation Corps back then to bring citizens to, to work to inspire communities to take care of each other and themselves using creativity as the methodology. Um, again, we're handling at YBCA side, we're handling the performing arts component. Paint the Void, again, Meredith will talk, is working to continue their work in engaging muralists um, uh, in, the, in the same regard. Um, it is uh, very inspiring for me to be working on this right now instead of wondering how we're going to put on plays or concerts online. We're actually out in community. We're on the front lines. We're trying to um, we're trying to take care of artists and we're trying to take care of our community. So thanks for letting me talk. I hope I didn't go over my time. No, you did great. Thank you, Jonathan, for the inspirational work that you shared and especially just mentioning that um, your team, you and yourself, your team are all on the front line just in terms of addressing the needs of the community. So I'm, I'm glad that we're able to pass it on to, to Merida who would explain more and just more of the collaboration. So um, last but not least, we have Merida Winner, co-founder of Building 180 from Paint the Void. So Merida Winner is a San Francisco-based art curator and producer. She is a co-founder of Building 180 an agency where mission is to inspire change through art and to help artists maintain sustainable careers. In addition to producing public art installations and interior across the globe, she is a program director for two Bay Area artists in resident programs. Meredith has spent the past 12 years dedicated to the arts working in a wide array of positions, deeply engrossed in her community. Most recently, she co-founded Paint the Void, a partnership project with Art for Civil Dis Discourse, coordinating the painting of over 100 murals on boarded storefronts in the wake of COVID-19. Meredith is both an artist and arts facilitator. She holds a Bachelor's of Fine Arts and Sculpture from Cornell University. Everybody, let's welcome Meredith Winner. Hey everyone, um, thanks for joining this evening. My name's Meredith. Um, uh, as mentioned, I am the co-founder of Building 180, which is how this all got off the ground. We're an arts agency in San Francisco, and we help artists maintain sustainable careers by connecting them with opportunities to, to ever, from everything from getting them jobs to actually managing their work and giving advice on how to get their work out to the public. And when COVID hit, a lot of our normal jobs really ceased to be. And as arts organizers, we were wondering how we could affect our community and, and help artists still thrive during you know, a very strange time. Um, so we initially just started to reach out to community members to see if this was something that would be interesting in the community. And it certainly was. We were definitely nervous about shelter in place and how to keep artists safe. Um, you know, during all the shelter in place mandates. But with our background in production and having the resources to speak with, you know, our insurance brokers and also community members and a really wide array of artists and also business owners, we were able to start the, you know, matching process for lack of a better word by having artists go out and paint murals on boarded storefronts in San Francisco. We put up a fundraiser, we thought we would only paint 10 to 15 murals. And to date we have painted over 100 murals. We've raised almost $250,000 in our efforts and we've been paying artists to go out to storefronts, revitalize the city, keep them working and you know, really inspire some hope throughout the city. Um, from, from talking to business owners and artists, it's really made a difference and community members stop artists all the time to ask them what they're doing and um, you know, just thank them for being involved in the community and, and bringing light to this really 
you know, very dark time. Um, what's amazing about the fundraising aspect is that the donations have mostly until now with our partnership with YBCA have been all through really local people, which just shows how important this ever has been to people within the within our own communities. We've also emphasized trying to work with artists very hyper local to the neighborhoods where the businesses are that they're painting. So there's a sense of community pride and neighborhood pride, which feeds into this general civic pride. Um, and you can feel free to flip through the slides as well to see some of the mural work here. This is just one example of a of a boarded storefront with it being tagged really dark and you know you're used to seeing a lively restaurant here and, and at the height of COVID it was just a um, shuttered storefront which we'd see all across the city um, and now we have partnered with YBCA and also the city of San Francisco to continue our efforts and paint an additional 30 murals in the neighborhoods that have been hit the most hard by COVID and we're targeting neighborhoods that have the highest rate of COVID infection to try to spread health and safety messages on the, on the boarded storefronts um, to inspire people hopefully to take care of each other and also wear masks and practice the guidelines set forth by the CDC. Uh, in, addition to, in addition to painting more murals, we're, we've also partnered with Illuminate who is another nonprofit organization in San Francisco who does artwork through Lightform and will be lighting 20 of the murals during this phase of the project to really show the, the artwork at all times of night. We know that San Francisco can be very dark and very, very cold in the evening time. So hopefully lighting the mural brings another facet to being able to see the murals in the evening time, perhaps on people's evening strolls. Um, and, and like John Jonathan was saying as well, you know, artists are a real big backbone of San Francisco and keeping them employed and having some hope um, is really is really at the crux of what we're doing. And since we've started this project, a lot of artists have had the opportunity to paint a lot of private commissions and um, other opportunities that have stemmed from this. And we hope our efforts, once it's safe, will be able to have a show of the boards and also potentially publish a book about our efforts. Um, so it's been a really amazing, it's, it's been really amazing to really engage with the community in a meaningful way, uh, in a way that we've never been able to do before because public art can be a really difficult process and, and this has allowed us to work nimbly and quickly and really make an impact. And you can, yeah, there's several other slides. You feel free to kind of scroll through them. This is a mural by Nora, Blue, Nora Brune um, at Shea Maman in Hayes Valley. And this is by Optimist, also in the same neighborhood. Um, and this was at Al's place. Um, and again, these, are, these were all uplifting images and also really colorful images. And yeah, again, to date, we've done over 115. So we'll be doing another 30 with the, the new city grant. Meredith, what other cities um, in the Bay Area? Uh, we've worked a, we've worked a bit in Oakland, but they uh, but we've not the bulk of our work has been done in San Francisco. Uh, at the height of Black Lives Matter, we did put funding towards other organizations that were working on the ground there. But um, most of our team is in San Francisco, and Building One Eighty operates out of San Francisco, and wanted to make sure to leave space for people that were already doing similar work in Oakland. And we're excited to be working with you. YBCA is in the center of the storm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Meredith. Would you want to um, go over this last slide that you had, or this is a... Oh, sure. This is this is a I created this before um, this program was um, finalized. So we've actually done more than a hundred murals, and funded you know, the numbers are a bit higher here. Um, however, uh, we yeah we've we are a very small team, which has been really amazing. We've been it's just the core team is five uh, five women who are doing the organization of Paint the Void, and then. Of course, we've been working with dozens and dozens of artists and have a volunteer team of um, documentary people, people helping with storage, people helping with, with um, removal of the boards and exhibition prospects. Uh, we host, hosted an event for the 100th mural, which was uh, in Union Square in San Francisco to celebrate the, the 100th mural um, and did an art walk tour of the murals that were downtown. Um, and it's just been really rewarding actually working with community members and people from different merchants associations and um, you know the San Francisco government and, and all, of, all of its arms um, to really make this happen. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a really wild ride for all of us. It's just it's been a lot of work to connect all the dots, but it's, it, it really has made a difference for people. It's great to hear it. Thank you, Meredith, for sharing all of the progress in terms of Paint the Void. Um, so I want to transition into the question Q&A discussion. Um, I'm going to see if anyone has placed any questions in our chat box, please do so right now. Um, and we could get started in just building a conversation with our three advocates. I'm going to move forward with a few questions that we have. Um, just a moment. So Meredith, uh, Bob Erickson asked if there's anything like this in San Jose. Do you know of that? Um, not, not at this point. We've because we are local here. We have been focusing our efforts in in San Francisco. However, what's interesting about when this all launched, we were, our team was spread out through, throughout the country. I was in New York when the shutdown happened and spent two months there while my business partner was in, uh, was in Tahoe. Uh, one person was in San Francisco and the other was in Oakland. And we accomplished, I think, the first maybe 40 murals by being remote. So it's something that we are interested in, in, in teaching other organizers how to or giving them a blueprint of how to accomplish that because it can be really done from afar um, so long as you're you know engaging with the your local community about and the artists that live there it, it can really it could be really be done anywhere I don't to, to my knowledge I, I'm not sure of anything happening like this in San Jose yet um, first question I wanted to ask everybody um, what programs, dynamics, or movements do you see coming out of the pandemic that have a long-term as well as a short-term staying power? Would anyone want like to start the conversation? I do. Thanks, Ray. Uh, I think that um, technology uh, is here to stay in terms of the way that we are working going forward. Um, I know that I was talking about the desire for the community to um, engage in, in a live, uh, uh, live in-person event. But without the technology from um, the computer graphics that we use and the technologists who came to do pro the projection mapping onto the buildings, we wouldn't have been able to amplify the existing stories that were already there uh, in terms of the murals uh, in the Bayview. Um, and so I think Technology is definitely going to be part of the way the film festival is going to be um, working going forward. 
And um, I really, really think that uh, also another um, dynamic that's um, really important to underscore is that uh, we, we were working with organizations and events and stories that were already there. What we just came in there and sort of amplified what was already there using technology. And I think that that, uh, that way of working in collaboration and in uplifting and um, holding hands and um, helping each other is also a dynamic that's going to be around going forward for all of us, not just the festival. Yeah, I, I think I think um, I would tag on to that, Faye, that, that uh, you know, when you see across the arts fields and or, and, and or organizations within fields who are wholly dependent on their spaces to thrive, let alone survive, are having really the hardest time right now and are the opportunity to redefine what it means to be in service of community by being in community is actually um, one of the most powerful sort of portals that we, we are finding ourselves going through. And I see the tension between people who are trying to hold tread water until they can get back into their buildings and those who are moving through the portal. And so organizations like SFUF, which is our affectionate name for SF Urban Film Fest, is um, who understand that the greatest assets of a community are found in a community and that it is uh, that artists have a unique role to lift them up and coalesce them into some narrative that can affect policy is something that YBCA shares very strongly in common, which is why we brought the SF Film, Urban Film Fest in, into partnership with us. And I think that if, if we move in that direction, we have a game, the arts field has a game to play. And if not, some of it's gonna fall apart and fall away. And we're in that space right now. That's what I see. So I think we're in a, an extraordinary revolution where we're, we have to take the word engagement and we got to swallow that and really, really own it in a way that is not lip service to, uh, to funders or to the public or to ourselves um, so that we are intrinsically connected to community, listening to them and lifting up as we go in partnership with them. So I see that as a major positive. Thank you, Faye and John. And I, I think like in terms of encircling it and where community is like the heart of it all and just more of in terms of listening and taking action, I find it very admirable, especially in moving programs and dynamics forward. Um, so apologies, everybody. I was able to look into the chat box. There's a few questions. Um, you're welcome to um, speak as unmute yourself, but I'm going to go first with Bob Erickson. I think, I'm not sure who was this directed to, but it says anything like this in San Jose. I would assume it's directed towards uh, Paint the Void. I think we answered that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, while you were about, while you were while you were figuring something out, we we did that. Okay, great. What about um, Enos? So it's more of are there any exhi exhibition art talks with your artist plan for December and January? Um, for Paint the Void, we've been exploring a lot of the a lot of the exhibition options currently, we don't have anything yet planned for December or January, particularly because our new grant funding will be rolling out over the course of the next three to five months. So our, our hope is that um, we could do something, we could do an exhibition hopefully in the spring. It's also a difficult time since it's so dark out very early to do an exhibition outside as you know, with COVID, we would need to be doing outside. I love the idea of doing a panel with the artists. We haven't actually done something similar to that yet. Um, but yeah, there's nothing yet planned for December, January, but we're in talks with a lot of different venues and, and different ideas of people who could potentially host the boards. Because we're doing murals on boarded storefronts, it takes a really large space that we'd be able, need to be able to put them outside somewhere or have a, a, a very large space to be able to accommodate people to view them safely. Thank you, Meredith. I'm going to move on to the next question. This is from Jesse Jean. Um, so it's directed, I'm not sure who it is, but it's more, should we reach out to you to get that blueprint? 
Um, I spoke about the blueprint and we are, our team is currently in the process of trying to make some formalized documents that explain the process of how this works. Everything from setting up a fundraiser, what you need to protect artists, the, the potential equipment and pitfalls you would have, as well as the process itself of reaching out to businesses and reaching out to artists and connecting with them with each other in a step-by-step -step way of how to to create a mural from afar. So that's something we'll definitely be sharing in the coming months. Um, it's something that we're still working on. Thank you, Meredith. We have a follow-up question from John. Have you been able to involve children in these programs? Uh, I'll jump in, it, John, not in, in reference to this SF Creative Corps, no. In terms of how we have engaged youth in, around um, uh, community work uh, this summer during COVID, yes. Um, as we, we were about to open a, an exhibit, which was an art and civic experience, which was uh, called Come to Your Senses, which was in partnership with the city and Art in Action, which is a uh, curatorial team um, that was aiming to use artists' uh, talents and skills to inspire people to take uh, the census in especially hard to count communities. Um, we uh, had to stop all of our school programs. So instead we engaged our youth to create, um, to, 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 uh, create artistic work that would go into food to CSA boxes, to go to hard to count communities to ensure that people were taking the census not in terms of the SF Creative Corps, which is a little bit more complicated because it's like Friday night in the Valencia and North Beach. Um, but if we were to expand this and do this in areas that might be more um, uh, daytime and might just have a little more lasting life because we're only doing this as a pilot, I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Jonathan. So moving on to Christine's question, and I believe this is directed towards all organizations. Have your efforts in increasing engagement and being out in the public with the community shed light onto social issues or social justice movements in ways that have become more prominent than before? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, that we actually don't have a social safety net in this country. And because of COVID, you can really see the uh, racial impact of COVID. Um, the highest rates are in the Mission and then in the Bayview, uh, where people of color, essential workers are, are live and work. Um, and then we've also seen that artists are actually essential workers. They, they artists and performers are living in precarious positions uh, and their livelihoods are basically gone especially musicians. There's, there's no musical venues that have been open for eight months and we don't actually have a program for that. Um, we don't actually see artists as essential workers. We don't actually see art as part of our, as a part of being human. So um, in terms of really understanding how we've structured our community, our city, our society, that we don't actually center our human oriented activities very well. We are very transactionally oriented and that we don't honor artists or performers as part of the way that we bring joy and um, community every day. I mean, the fact that you listen to Spotify or watch Netflix, who are those people? Those are artists and performers. And we really need to really think about how we support the arts and culture more. Uh, can I get a jump in, Meredith? Can I answer? Go ahead. Um, yeah, Christine, um, I was looking back, thinking back on the thing I mentioned at the top of when I presented around Market Street prototyping. The first year we did it, uh, we found that, that, you know, walking into any street, which is walking into a neighborhood, and even if it's Market Street, these are different neighborhoods. And the experience we had in Union Square neighborhood, like Powell Street, uh, between Powell and Grant or down on um, Spear and Davis down down at the Embarcadero was very different than when we were at um, the area that was at the midpoint of the Tenderloin. And the second we learned that we walk, we were walking in 
we were just walking in saying, look at these wonderful designs that we hope you engage with. And um, it just smacked us in the face. And the second year when we went back, we spent the year working with um, thought partners in the community, community leaders and youth there, and they created their own prototypes for themselves. And uh, we partnered them with uh, design firms to make sure that they had the support that they needed. But um, there's different forms of listening, depending how deep you go to really work in communities that have extraordinary individual assets, but do not have the resource in the same way that Faye referenced when we were in Bayview. Um, and it requires a very different relationship to how you walk in, how you walk in with humility, not humility, with kind of like lack of expertise, a genuine lack of expertise, um, because we don't know the community as much as we uh, think we do. And so they're, 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 we have to challenge our own sort of sense of primacy in those moments and be less, um, like we're providing something and more that we are partnering with, which is a very different uh, angle. And we had to retreat and come back in a different way the second time a Market Street prototyping festival. So I think this, it, you, have to, you have to listen to that or these things are never gonna succeed. Yeah, I, we found that as well, John, is that we have, you know, we're Paint the Void is a very new organization and we didn't know all of the people in the neighborhoods of which we're working and found that murals, if we didn't find an artist that was hyper local to the neighborhood, their murals were, would get tagged if we didn't do our due diligence of doing the community outreach, which is, which is a, a lot of effort then um, community members weren't as, weren't as pleased with what we were doing or, or people would be angry within the community and it has been a really humbling experience to take a step back and to partner, like you said, or or be a silent donor and, and let these these other organizations continue to do the good work that they're doing, and, and and let them continue doing that and not steal the steal a stage just because we were fortunate enough to get funding. So we're we're really trying to in this phase really partner and, and really reach out to the neighborhoods in which we'll be working to make sure that everyone's voice is accounted for. Thank you, Faye, Meredith, and Jonathan. I, I wanted to continue on to um, another question. Um, that one way, and just more of like how things have changed, especially pre and post COVID. So in what ways has 2020 um, reshaped the arts and culture community, has it accelerated effects um, from challenges from the community face? Um, I, I mean, if I understand your question correctly, I think we've touched on the, is, this as well, is that um, the it's very apparent which neighborhoods have been hit the hardest, and it is humbling to realize that these are people who are really the backbones of our community and you know just wanting to inspire that we are act actually should take care of artists and take care of the people in our community has been a big shift of how people are thinking in the wake of COVID and and how we are diverting funds and resources and even conversations that even having conversations with those same people has been you know, different than before for, for, for us included and for Building 180 also included is how can we, how can we really recognize what's been going on for a while and then, and then help by partnering or help by funding or, um, you know, really recognizing and, and saying out loud the injustices that have occurred amongst these communities and, and do something to change that. Would anyone else like to add any more comments? Okay, so um, with YBCA, San Francisco Urban Film Fest and Paint the Void, has this year's pandemic and social movements highlight areas of focus within your mission, as well as look closer to whether all backgrounds and communities are well represented? Uh, yeah, definitely. YBCA um, uh, has has really 
we've taken a great deal of stock and addressed um, um, you know, the need to, to continue to have a viable business model while at the same time organizing the institution to be in service of artists who need to pave the way now in a way that they have not fully in the past and to shift our resource to shift power uh, to artists, BIPOC artists, um, primarily, though not exclusively, but in a way that that really shifts the kind of financial investment in artists through our, our artist-led giving circle, through our, our SOCAP artists and through our upcoming uh, core, uh, core artists from our YBCA 100, in addition to artists in residence like SFUF. Um, and to build the organization around that is a dramatic shift for YBCA. Um, it's still in process. We're taking a lot of time to do it, to do it right, um, because we cannot, uh, you know, we have to move a ship strongly and swiftly in the right, in, into a different direction without, um, but breaking it down is all right, as long as we can continue moving and, uh, and make sure that we are actually doing the work that we say is on our masthead, which um, really is, to, is a, as a social justice organization, to really do that um, requires a shift in our business model, which we are doing, a shift in our focus, a shift in who we think is needs to be put in front as the artists who are going to lead the way to, to better the health and well-being of our communities. So that's where we're at right now in our journey. And um, uh, I, I, I know it means that we're not doing as many, we're not gonna do shows, we're not gonna have the kind of relationship with certain kinds of artists that may have been part of the contemporary art scene. And we understand that, but there are artists who deserve to be supported and invested in now. And that's the choice that we're making and that we think is going to be the relevance of the YBCA moving forward. I just wanna underscore how revolutionary YBCA's transformation is. I mean, if you, if you look at the landscape of contemporary art museums, YBCA is way ahead in terms of the way it's trying to incorporate civic engagement. It's interdisciplinary and cross-sector approach has, has small roots already growing inside it because of the Market Street and some other uh, collaborations with schools. But it's really, really trying to amplify that. And we, and we feel very supported in that way. Um, in terms of like what we think um, at, the, at the SF Urban Film Fest will be the future, the future is diversity. The diversity is resilience. And that means diversity in terms like of Jedi, like justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, meaning per people of color leading the SF Urban Film Fest, uh, people of color uh, as filmmakers, as panelists, as producers, where uh, communities of color is where, are, are where we work, but also diversity in terms of cross-sector, cross-disciplinary uh, um, collaborations. We have urban planners, we have uh, documentary filmmakers, we have um, media makers, we have technologists on the, on the same team. Um, and so looking forward as diversity is resilience. That's, that's, our, that's, what, we're, that's what we're thinking. Thank you, Faye. Um, so one last question before we um, conclude the webinar. How can we help and support the art and culture community, especially for us attending this, this webinar? Well, I'd, I'd, have, the, I'd have everybody really um, rally around City Hall to make sure that they really consider arts and culture as much as a business, as small businesses, restaurants, um, to support performers and artists. Um, it's also uh, First Amendment, you know, freedom of expression, just as much as religious and uh, political convenings. At also, artists and performers are expressing their First Amendment rights. Um, I would say that, you know, if people have the means to donate to arts organizations, that's an easy thing. But if you can't even just 
knowing about them and sharing the efforts of those communities is goes such a long way to get the word out because it's it's very difficult in a really saturated environment of people asking for money, but people putting these arts organizations directly helps artists. And I think that they are, you know, what makes our cities our cities and what makes, what really drives culture. Um, yeah, so pay attention and read about them and engage in ways that you're able to, you don't have to just vote with your dollar. Yeah, I would, um, yeah, what Faye said, for sure, advocate your asses off. What Meredith said, donate when you can. And I would add, just get to know, get to engage in an organization that matters, that you think is actually doing something in the community. One commitment to an organization that is working in community will make a huge difference. It does, it just does. It may seem like that's just not enough, but boy, I'll tell you what you can do as a supporter, as a co-creator, as an advisor, anybody, as a networker will make a difference. And the point is we just continually need to make a difference. I went out to Scranton, Pennsylvania with my husband to get out the vote. Nothing made me more depressed than every day doing that. From November, from uh, 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 the end of October to, to November 3rd and two, three days later, I realized that actually knocking on the door and talking to people made a difference. All right, Bay Marinas, Jonathan, thank you so much for taking time aside and sharing your insights with us. Your last words during this discussion are, I hope are very impactful to our audience. Um, everybody as Healthy Spaces ongoing conversation, your feedback is welcome as we would like to provide more topics, discussions that pique your interest and curiosity. So before we conclude, please join us in upcoming events. In December, we have a joint holiday cook-off between multiple alumni groups from Singapore, Taiwan, SoCal, New York, Hong Kong, and Mexico. Self-taught cooks will compete with a local Ron Blue chef in making beef wellington, puffs, and empanadas. That would be next Friday, California time, 7 p.m. and 12 p.m. Singapore time. And lastly, we have a virtual social on December 10th to close off 2020. Um, before moving on, lastly, we're grateful to have these organizations support the art community. If you would like to provide support with donations to any of the three organizations continuing efforts, you're welcome to contribute with the links that are provided in the Eventbrite email. Once again, everybody, thank you for joining us for this evening. We're grateful everyone is remaining resilient as we move forward to 2021. And again, thank you, Jonathan, Meredith, and Faye. Your words are very impactful, and I'm sure everyone's gonna just in a way jumpstart in terms of advocating and taking action moving forward. So with that, until next time, everybody, stay strong, healthy, and thrive. Take care and have a great day.